Welcome to my Chinese horror movie reviews. In this special review format, we'll not only check out the movie, but we'll explain the ending, because if you know anything about Chinese horror movies, then you know they aren't very conventional. In this episode, we are going back to what this series was originally created for, crappy Chinese horror movies. And this one is a doozy from my favorite horror movie production studio, Film Noon. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans, and welcome to this review of Under the Bed 3 a sequel which seems to have absolutely no relation to the two previous films. Let's look at what's under the bed. To be really honest with you, this movie is so terribly confusing that it doesn't really make sense. A singer, Jia Jia, and her husband, Zi Hao, move into the Film Moon Mansion. Yes, this is the same house that is used in quite a few Film Moon movies. One of the pieces of furniture they own is an antique wooden bed frame. The removalists comment that the bed is cursed. Jar Jar is caught up in a scandal. She's lost her voice and a gaggle of journalists are desperately circling outside the mansion, ready to pounce on her. Zi Hao, the husband, is some kind of pharmacist who develops new medications. From what I can gather, he has provided medication to Jar Jar and himself to assist with stress and other mental disorders. He feels guilt over the suicide of his ex-girlfriend. The medication has the side effect of violence and hallucinations. One such hallucination is a dodgy looking character called Xiao Tian Tin. Because of course it does. This is a Chinese horror movie and hallucinations, medication and mental illness are a film moon staple. While living in the house, a ghost seems to be haunting them, killing their puppy and hurting other animals. Xiao Mei, the housekeeper, informs Jia Jia that she thinks the bed is cursed and she knows a shaman from her hometown who can perform a ritual to cleanse the bed frame. But the ritual doesn't work and the ghost still haunts the house. How can Jia Jia, Zi Hao and Xiao Mei get rid of the ghost for good? And is it even a ghost? Now we're going to play a game. I'm going to give you three options and you're going to guess how this movie is explained. Your options are Zi Hao's ex-girlfriend's twin sister is the ghost Xiao Mei is acting as the ghost to scare Jia Jia. Zi Hao has developed a super strong drug that is causing the hallucinations. The answer will be revealed in the explanation section. No, absolutely not. The reason is just because how poor both the movie and translation are, making it a chore to watch. However, if you were like me and really enjoy these film moon horror movies, then part of what makes this movie fun is guessing all the reused elements. First and obvious is the mansion from Frightening Embroidery Shoes, and another film we will cover in another video, but this movie did come first. Speaking of Frightening Embroidery Shoes, the granny from that movie is also in this. As for main characters, good old Abby Yin gets stuck with the lead role. You might recognize her from such film moon classics like Haunted Cinema 2 and Ghost in Barbers. She's also in Under the Bed 2, but playing a different character. A review of that is coming soon. And finally, we've got Wei Song, the goth hallucination. He's also in Under the Bed 2, and plays a much larger role in the Haunted Graduation photo series. One day, I really need to create an org chart that chronicles all these film moon movies. In fact, that's a great idea. This movie is memorable because of how terrible it is. Out of all the film moon movies I've seen, this isn't the worst, but it's pretty damn close. Hilariously, the bit that sticks the most in my mind is in the house's study. On the wall, there is a portrait of Jar Jar. However, this is actually a real portrait of actress Abby Yin. This is the exact same photo that is used on both her Dolban and IMDB actor page profiles. Love it. Otherwise, another scene that elicited a chuckle from me was when the shaman was sitting on the back of a ute smoking a cigarette, completely out of character. Also, in the end where Jar Jar uses the journalists to her advantage is also pretty clever, but we will talk more about that in the explanation section. Before we move on, let's learn some more Chinese. Si. This means dead. You may have heard Chinese people have a superstition towards the number four because these two words sound similar. Sir. The whole movie is just an utter confusing mess. 
The story moves at a very brisk pace, going from scene to scene, plot line to plot line, very quickly, leaving no time for the audience to take a moment to understand what's going on. There's a good reason for this though, because most of the storyline is completely irrelevant. The movie would have worked better as a 30 minute short story in an anthology movie, because when you cut out all the junk, there really is only about 30 minutes of relevant plot. This is the spoiler section, so if you ever, ever plan on watching this film, maybe skip this bit. Back to the three choices I gave you earlier in the video. If you guessed Zihao's ex-girlfriend's twin sister is the ghost, then you'd be correct. Well done. Twins is another well-used Chinese horror movie explanation. I've seen it in a few other movies that I'll cover in future episodes, and quite frankly, it's just another pointless cop-out. Once Jia Jia and Xiao Mei realize there's no such thing as ghosts, Jar Jar approaches the journalists that stalk the outside of the mansion and invite them in to help her catch the real ghost. And for some dumb reason, this actually works. A woman called Ma Xiao Yun, who is the twin sister of Zi Hao's dead ex-girlfriend Ma Xiao Yu, has been dressing up as a ghost to try and scare Zi Hao, and by extension Jia Jia, because she feels he let her sister die. The issue is, the real truth is her sister had cancer and didn't want to live with it, so she killed herself. At the end, when Ma Xiaoyun is creeping around the house ready to scare everyone, she somehow managed to completely overlook the two dozen or so photojournalists sleeping in the hall of the house. How? No idea. Strangely, what's never really explained is the hallucination of Xiao Tian Xin, who Ji Hao sees everywhere. Maybe they're saving that for the next sequel. Spoiler alert, there are no future sequels. Poor Abby Yin. She's never going to star in a movie that is even remotely decent. As for Phil Moon, I've still got quite a few of their movies to look at. In general horror movie terms, in a scale of 1 to 5, this movie clearly gets a 1. It's utterly rubbish and it doesn't deserve anything higher. With my patent pending ghost rating, which stands for great horror or stupid trash, this movie gets two ghosts. It's just below average compared to other Chinese horror movies. There are no really scary bits in this, and it reuses the same boring film moon tropes, including the red dress green faced ghost. I hope you enjoyed this look at Under the Bed 3. This is a regular video series, so please press like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you for watching.